the entity is to develop character, comradeship, discipline, leadership, secular outlook, spirit of adventure and ideals of selfless service amongst the youth of the country. to create human resource of organized, trained and motivated youth to provide leadership in all walks of life and be always available for the service of the nation.
I request everyone to please rise for the school song.
is not only very good, it is inspiring, it is fun, it is diverse. So thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. There is a lot to be told about here. We are here today to celebrate, of course, St. Mary's communities. We are here to celebrate, as I say, its parents, its teachers, its students. And to celebrate how a school, with the power of education, transform young people into what the outgoing house girl, if I remember correctly her title, said, you transform young people into conscious and responsible citizens. The many things we learn when we come to school, we recognize those that were very good, we recognize those that worked hard, we recognize the, the teachers that with guidance and care have made our children better, better people. I want to talk to you overall about the role of your generation, about the role of young people and what you will have to do in the future. Because schools is one of the, those areas we have to think about the future. By the time many of you graduate, you will have, hopefully, some of the tools that you will need to become the leaders of tomorrow. What we just saw, from the marching to the gym, it requires order, it requires discipline, teamwork, and hard work. And those are always good tools to have when you are an adult. What does it mean to be citizens of the world? Why do we need these young people to be citizens of the world? It means that they have to have profound love and respect for their families, for their states, for your nations, as part of the fundamental identity but also, and very importantly, to identify broadly as members of humanity. That begins with being open to the world. And this school teaches us that. Inclusion, diversity. And we are very, very honored to be that. It means to encourage curiosity as a pillar of your character. Curiosity is a skill. It's not only why, 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 why. It's a lifestyle. It fosters what some people call empathy. And that is not something we can teach in a book, but we can teach by doing. Empathy is often defined as putting yourself in the shoes of others. Empathy is also to see things to other people's eyes. If I sit in a wheelchair, like my friend here, the world looks quite different, doesn't it? My mother was in a wheelchair for a long time. And the first thing we children had to do is sit at her level every time. As ambassador of Mexico in India, I have had the opportunity to travel and see a lot of this wonderful country. Its natural richness, its diverse people, and work to bring both our countries together. My personal aim, of course, is to work and strengthen cultural, business, and all of those relationships that needs to be done among two countries, but also to talk to the future of this country, a future that hopefully will talk to the future of my, my country. How do we do that in the following years? First, by recognizing ourselves in the other's eyes. Mexico and India are of course both emerging economies, young, vibrant democracies, 
by ensuring more connectivity and by ensuring that you may be in the map if you don't know where Mexico is today when you go back say mama where is ex exactly Mexico and open an atlas and look for us advancement in technology have completely changed the way we work we move we speak we have fun and we relate to each other I see you all taking pictures maybe looking at Google right now to something 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 so the way we relate to each other and the way we work with technology has changed us these have then generated both benefits and new problems because sometimes we don't talk to each other for example this generation that is here will be the first generation that lives in a planet with 8.5 billion people by 2030. When I was young, 2030s only came up in novels. 2030, we can almost touch it. You, the young people of today, will be expected to pick up what we left for you. Not always that we left for you was good. We left also poverty, climate change, and challenges that you can see are quite complex. Today's youth, 1.8 billion people, are the most connected young people, the most outspoken, it was very interesting to talk to them very, very closely and very shortly and ask them, what do you want to be? And I learned many things that they want to be. I also learned that even the most hardworking of them, every now and then, then did something stupid and got into trouble. So these young people are going to be the most connected, the most outspoken, the global citizens that have to work towards a better work. Through the mind of a global citizen, of a young boy like you, of a young girl like the one there, you will have to have actions that have repercussions beyond our own city. Some of you are already traveling to Japan because you're sports people. Other of you are traveling to the northern India or southern India because whatever your activity takes you will take you beyond your own city and your own country. In other people, you will see beyond yourself. You will see beyond your environment and that is why we have to share the challenges that the world faces today. I hope that you will find causes in which you believe in and raise your voice and create positive change. As you know, India is a large, large country with enormous challenges. Air pollution is one of the challenges that we have and an estimated of 600,000 premature deaths in India happened in 2010 only because of pollution. According to the WHO World Health Organization report, 20 most polluted cities are in India. That is not a very good and happy medal. And today we gave so many awards. That is not one that we want to have. I believe that we should be able to reclaim breathing, breathing as our right, an undisputable right. But breathing, we should be able to breathe a good and happy air. Because you see, breathing, is the most democratic thing. It doesn't matter if you are a girl or boy, if you are young or old, if you are rich or poor, we all breathe the same air. I know very well things about pollution. 
Because in 1992, when I was growing up, believe me, I was also young once, I lived in the most polluted city in the world, that was Mexico. Today, Mexico is one of the best 40 cities in the world. The pollution was so, so high that birds started falling from the sky. And 20 years later, we have not conquered, we have not won, but we have won many battles. Now, I live in India, and I see many, many cities going round that same road. I live in Delhi, I am a Delhiat today, and my city, Delhi, at times, is the worst city of the world. It's especially hard in the valley. After the valley, many, many days, the sun vanishes. We can almost cut the air that we are breathing. We know that we are breathing very bad air. But we love our fireworks. And fireworks are made of gunpowder. And it is the gunpowder of heavy metals that is in the fireworks that the next day is inside the lungs of our children. That doesn't sound good. So suddenly I became a celebrity. That's what they call us. I don't know why, I'm just a public servant. And I'm very thankful to those young boys and girls that want to be public servant. It is an honor to serve. And celebrities should not be public servants or public servants should not be celebrities. And I became a celebrity by doing something that millions of Indians do every day, which is use a rickshaw. Okay, my rickshaw is more colorful. Okay, okay. so if I... <laughs> Sorry, I don't take myself too seriously. Um, so I became a celebrity just because I have a white rickshaw. But thanks to having a white rickshaw, I've been invited today, and I thank my rickshaw for that. During the interviews, the first thing people ask me is, why are you doing this? And again, as I say, I do it because millions of Indians do it. But I reckon that I could make a little difference by using an auto and not my car. So that you know, my auto produces a third of pollutants than my car does. It is also a very good and small vehicle that takes you around. It allows you to be very, 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 very close to reality. People come into your auto, talk to you, smile at you, ask you things, and every now and then they even want a picture. So if we could do things and ensure goals in environment or in poverty or in whatever you might think is proper, then we can make a change. I lost my page, don't worry. Now, let me talk a little bit to the young students that have left the school and to these young students that now are going to be the committee, all dressed in black, very, very stern, very serious. Some of them call themselves perfect and I have laughed at them and they very graciously have agreed that they are not perfect. In this ever-changing world, being a global citizen, trying to make a difference, can be a challenge. The girl that was leaving as a major school girl, she was saying that she had to face many challenges for being that. So let me tell you a few things that might help you in your way, not only in your later years for school, but in the beginning of your university and then along the way. Be good listeners. 
you would be surprised how many things you learn just by looking at the expression and the body language of people. Listening is actually the key to my own trade, which is diplomacy. It is the key to negotiation. Larry King, the entertainment, once said that he was not going to learn anything of that day by talking, so that he had to do some listening. Seek balance in your teams, diversity, diversity of personalities, of points of view, are enriching. Make it a point to include a balance of gender. Why? Well, because it's right, because we are 50% of what holds the, the sky, and because complementary talents will help you, the results will have better outcome. It is important to be diverse. And this school, of the little glimpse that I have of it, is very, very diverse. Make your own recipe. Embrace your own method. There are no such things as one route to success. Many routes to success. Many ways of doing it. And depends on your talent and your capacity. Work every single day to make a difference. You can do it. Method is the key to knowledge. Be gentle. Girls and boys, be gentle. You do not have to be rough to be strong. Rough and strong is not the same thing. Build confidence through humility to acknowledge your strengths and weaknesses. It allows you to be humble. It is better to build your confidence from within. I know that is it a challenge, and today, in a world of imaging, it is a challenge. Make it a personal goal to find your own strength and rely on it. You can pursue your dreams. Be courageous. It doesn't matter if you want to be an accountant, a public servant, a chemist, if you want to study maths, or if you want to be a fashion designer or a sports person, be courageous. Be resilient. Learn to cope with life as it plays out. The people that we interact daily with do not always treat us the way we want them to, but we cannot change them. We can only change our own behavior. We should learn from taking feedback from others, always in a positive way. Walk the talk. It's easy to say, I will do, and wait for others to do. Walk the talk. Teach by doing yourself. Become an example. The world is dire of need. Afternoon, my Saturday, my Fridays, my Sundays, I do that all the time. But I give myself some goals. I'm also an athlete, a very old one, you might think. But I run marathons, I do sports, and I give myself a goal for every, every year that I can achieve and I can look at myself and say, okay, you did something different than the day before. I hope you will seek balance for your life in all areas. You're very used to having balance in your life when you are students. But then, adults forget that. As you have done here, do it when you go out of here. Find a balance between keeping the mind as a global citizen, but seeking solutions for your environment. Bring positive change to your immediate community. Work for a better community wherever you are. Congratulations to all. Congratulations to St. Mary's School, to this wonderful community. And I feel honored and privileged to be St. Mary's community, at least for one day. Thank you very much.
These brilliant gymnasts have now switched to the shoulder stand position which demands massive shoulder strength. Look at the agility with which they have now switched to this exercise called straddle walls on the chair. These budding gymnasts showcase their immense shoulder strength with their perfect body posture. This is called the handstand which as a whole improves your body ladies and gentlemen. And now we have the rollover. Ladies and gentlemen, this act of coordination where these students move in a left-right manner, forming a circle, needs enormous amount of precision and focus. The next feat is the cartwheel. This exercise requires phenomenal arm strength and leg muscle strength. This is called the T-Balance. This wonderful act of balancing requires the gymnast to have immense strength. Impeccable show. Here we have the dive again. This is the horizontal balance. Balancing in the field of gymnastics requires phenomenal concentration and excellent fitness level. We see these gymnasts doing the same act but with an increase in difficulty level. This time the students do the horizontal balance without using their hands. Here we see our gymnasts again showcasing their arm and leg strength. This is the over the chair dive and roll. This wondrous move of dive and roll requires strong arms. And then... And again, the jaw-dropping exercise called the headstand is presented to leave us all astonished. This move is called the leg split. Ladies and gentlemen, please put your hands together for our extremely talented young gymnasts. We begin with the kids performing through vault. There goes the first kid and he clears it with utmost precision ladies and gentlemen. Amazing display of athleticism. Amazing performance. Look at the display of the explosive power of legs, the calf muscles, quadriceps, the hamstring all being used in this exercise. An extremely praiseworthy move. Look at how these kids maintain balance and focus along with displaying arm strength.
दिव्यांश Next up, we have the straddle wall. This is the variation of the previous exercise. But now with stretched legs. Here goes the kid and above the vault on the mat and he clears it. This exercise involves the abducted group of muscles with an emphasis on the stretching of legs. And now we move on to the handspring. Ladies and gentlemen, this requires an immense amount of arm strength and balance. And look how he goes, like a rainbow over the vault with Gaba sir assisting our kids. We now switch to somersault, which involves the understanding of centripetal and gravitational force. And here he goes with the agility of a squirrel and a wonderful act. Amazing display of gymnastic skills, ladies and gentlemen. is similar to that of a rainbow, ladies and gentlemen.
Ladies and gentlemen, this is a somersault dive. Here he goes with the agility of a squirrel and an amazing stun. And next we have the dive and roll through the cellophane. Here he goes. Through the hoop like a dolphin. to present this highly precise masterpiece so please cheer them up with your applause this ring is a metaphor for all the trials and tribulations that these students will conquer with the same courage as they do today a tiger and through it he lands with utmost precision ladies and gentlemen here we have our tiger sprinting There she goes. And from the fire he emerges like a phoenix.
किसी अन्य में Ladies and gentlemen, please please put your hands together for these extremely talented and courageous gymnasts. Ladies and gentlemen, we're done with the gymnastic things.